You want to work out and you go to the gym and you continuously stare at the weight for one hour during which you're supposed to work out. Do you think that you're going to build up any serious muscle? It's a total waste of time. Now I know what you're going through. You just finished your 11th and 12th standard, you come into an Indian college and you see that there are so many different things to do. There is academic, there are sports, there are other extracurricular activities and there is also you have to maintain a social life. So you want to effectively manage your studies so that you have some time left for your other aspects in your life. You go on Online and you see productivity youtubers you try to implement some of those tricks and principles into your own life but it is suitable for the western system of education which emphasizes on conceptual learning we are in india where a lot of emphasis is made on making short notes and long notes basically they just want us to fill up paragraphs and paragraphs in sheets of paper so that they can show something to the university and say that we have taught something to these students you try to implement those techniques of active recall and you ultimately do not find a system that will actually be something useful for you in the long term. This is not your failure. If you try to use Anki flashcards in the future and not able to cope up with a huge amount of review cards from your previous Anki sessions, don't worry. It is not your fault. It is the fault that we are trying to compel apples with oranges. But that does not mean that you can't use an evidence-based scientific technique like active recall to revise your stuff. Today I'm going to share with you five Indian techniques of active recall that you can use in the Indian college arena. The first technique is called test dose. This is based on a very simple hypercorrection principle. For example, I remember in my third standard, I had to write a Hindi essay and I was extremely bad at Hindi. The essay was on animals and I did not know the Hindi translation of the word duck. And therefore, I just put a D and K in Hindi and so I just put D and K in Devanagari for duck. And later on, the teacher just came around and told me and laughed on my face and said, Anirudh, there is a special Hindi name for duck and that is called Batak. And right from the third standard up till now, when I'm 23 years of old, I still know that the Hindi meaning of the word duck is batak. And because I made that mistake in my Hindi essay, that is why I can remember even till this day when the teacher corrected me the correct answer. Now, how can we use this hyper correction effect or the test dose in our day to day studies? What you can do is you can go online and find some questions to the topic at hand. For example, in medical school, there is a very important topic called multiple sclerosis and the incidence of multiple sclerosis is increasing as we have an even more aged population. So what I would do, I would go online and find some MCQs on multiple sclerosis. I would go online, answer these MCQ questions and I'm sure out of 10 questions, I would get like 7 wrong. But now when I go and watch the video of multiple sclerosis on YouTube or see that chapter in my textbook, I will be extremely focused. I will try to hyper correct myself. I will try to find the answers to the question which I got wrong. And therefore, all the information that I consume via the textbook will be better registered in my brain. You can keep on doing this on multiple topics. And your brain will always try to compensate and try to learn more because the brain does not want to get the future question wrong if a question from multiple sclerosis appears in the exam. The next technique is to borrow the idea of quiz club from your college. If you're in a college, I'm sure there are a lot of quizzes nearby you. If you're in say Delhi University or Mumbai University, there are a lot of quizzes and very engaging quizzes. So what you can do is that form your very own quiz club. Get a few like-minded students, make a WhatsApp group and say, hey, today we are going to study so and so for five topics and later on at night after dinner while we are listening some music in the background and having a few snacks, we will quiz each other based on the topics that we have studied. We will frame our own questions. It not only give a huge competitive vibe to the entire college studying, you also make friendships and deepen your friendship bond. Trust me, friendships based on some common goals last forever and you will definitely need strong friends especially after when you go out of college and you'll be busy in your professional lives. These friends who helped you in the times of pain, in the times of working hard in college are those ones that you will always come back to whenever you face any crucial moment in your life. The third technique is called learning from history. It is often said that history repeats itself until we take the lessons and learn from it. This means go to your college library and take the past question papers. And this is extremely underrated because people usually go to the library and search for these past question papers just two, three weeks before the exam. But you should do this right at the start of your preparation because your past question papers will give you a goal. We often wonder during 
his entire vast syllabus, especially in med school, where is the line or that place where I stop studying? And the past question papers will give you a proper indication of what is actually required for you at the undergraduate level. In professions like medicine, in professions like law, it is very tempting to just keep on reading for days together. But problem here happens is that your mind has a very limited capacity for storage. So although you're feeling good that you're covering a huge amount of syllabus, you may not actually be able to remember nor recall that syllabus. Your first priority in college is to actually pass the exams. And after that, out of your own interest, you can go and read further on in the topic and develop a deep conceptual understanding. The fourth technique is what I call taking a tea break. After nearly one or one and a half hours of study and when you're feeling a bit tired, go out of your room, go make yourself some tea. Try to recall each and every single thing that you have learned. In that time, you can try to recall everything that you learned in that one hour. Take a piece of paper or take your tab or what have you and start writing whatever you recall. Start drawing whatever you recall, start making flowcharts, start making diagrams. Basically make it easy for your brain to recall all the stuff that you have. Now our parents are extremely concerned about their health. So for example, if you studied about fever, explain to them about fever, whatever you studied. And the good news about this technique is that at the end of your efforts, end of you explaining it to someone, you're always left with a good cup of chai to share with someone. No friend or parent is going to say no to a good cup of chai and gyan. The fifth technique is extremely underrated and I would want each and every single one of you to take this seriously because this literally changed our entire preparation in the final year of MEBS. As you know from my previous videos over here, we had one of the shortest final year MEBS in Indian history. More information on that particular video. So we essentially had our final year of MEBS from 9 months to 5 months. Which means we had to literally use all the most efficient study techniques to cover the entire syllabus. So remember in the library, we used to always discuss that, Hey Chaitanya, you studied this topic. Hey Taran, you studied this topic. And later on during the breaks that we take, we will come out of the library and discuss that same topic. So for example, if I studied a topic like hemorrhoids, I will explain it to Chaitanya in my own ways. And later on, Chaitanya explains to me fibroid in gynecology. And the funny part is around two days before the exam, my friend Chaitanya explained to me in detail what is fibroid and trust me when I was actually writing the answer in the exam his voice was literally in my ears it was as if I was writing the answer in his words and not my total understanding of it everyone has a unique voice and a unique way of explaining things and in that uniqueness you tend to remember everything that they have told you and trust me this can be a game changer if you can have like-minded friends who want to get ahead in your career and want to get good marks find your niche of friends and make an active timetable with them that this day we will study this topic, I will explain to you this topic, you explain to me this topic and after the entire study session we will go to the cafe and have a good cup of coffee. That's it guys for this video but active recalling can actually be an extremely energy draining process. That is if you want to study for long hours. I already made a video on the 5 techniques I suggest so that you can prolong your study sessions and study for long hours and do really good in your college and your school exams. You'll find that video linked somewhere over here or on the iCard over here. So after watching this video, do go and watch that video. And if you can integrate the process of active recall along with studying for long hours, trust me, there is no marks that you cannot achieve in your entire college life. It is extremely practical to use all the advice that we hear online and try to fit it into our context. And this is an effort on my part to take the best out of the productivity YouTubers and actually tell you what is practical in the Indian context. So if you want more such videos in the future, do hit the subscribe button, share this video with your friends and do like the video. I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.